Okay. We're on. Yay. Hey, everyone. We're making a Chinese takeout today. Sort of. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to make this using what you have. Now, soy sauce is usually a, a thing, right? Well, I have no soy sauce, but I do have coconut aminos. So I'm going to use that. I don't have a Chinese sherry, but I do have dry vermouth, so I'm going to use that. It's just that simple. Anyway, this is how we're going to make it. And I have a lot of different vegetables and what have you that I thought would make a great pairing with this. So we're going to give it a, a go. What do you say? Are you ready to go with me on this? Essentially what we're doing is a stir fry with an Asian deliciousness attached to it. So we're going to use a little avocado oil for this because remember, anytime we saute anything, we need to make sure we're using a high heat, a high smoke point type of an oil or fat that we're using. This time I'm using, um, I'm using avocado oil. Avocado oil has a smoke point of almost 500 degrees. So it's pretty, it's great for that. Let it get hot. You always want to add your oil and let it get hot or even better is have a hot pan, add the oil, let it heat up a little bit, then you add everything in. That's how you wanna do it. What we have here then, I'm gonna show you my ingredients so that you can see what we have. I have some toasted sesame seed oil. I keep that in the refrigerator because it goes rancid pretty quickly. And I use that at the very end for just adding that flavor. I'm just gonna tell you right now, if you have toasted sesame oil, Never, ever, ever cook in it because it will stick to your pan and make a humongous mess. Okay, so that's that. I have coconut aminos, I showed you that, and the vermouth. I'm also, I have Caroline's um, crunch, this is her garlic oil that she makes, her hot spicy garlic oil. You can find that on inheritedsalt.com, that's her blog, and that's all in there. You can take a look at that, and uh, I really like that a lot. It's good stuff. I've got mushrooms, I have cabbage, I have onions, I have cilantro, I have green onions, I have peanuts, I have garlic, of course, and I have some carrots, some chili peppers, because I don't have the Szechuan chilies or whatever, which is okay, the chili peppers will work just great. I have ginger, I don't have any ginger root, but I have the ginger in the tube, so I'll use that. I've got chicken, I have a little black pepper, I have a garlic rocker, I have a spoon, I have a cutting board, and I got a man behind the camera giving me actions. <laughs> All right, you ready to make this? Let's do it. We should have a sizzle. Remember, let's test the pan and make sure that we've got a sizzle. I'm gonna throw a little onion on there. Oh, that wasn't very accurate. Do I hear sizzle? I hear almost a sizzle. Let's give it another second. I'm gonna put the onion in first, then I'm gonna add, I am gonna add some salt and pepper. Then I'm going to add the chicken to that. Now I'm gonna add a teeny bit of salt only to the chicken when it's cooking. The salt will really come from your soy sauce if you have it or your coconut aminos. But again, you're gonna go back and test it to make sure. The other thing that you usually see when you're looking at an, an Asian dish, like especially when you're doing Chinese takeout, one of the problems with Chinese takeout is that they use a ton of sugar. And that's not cool. We're not gonna use any sugar for this, so it's not gonna taste exactly like it. The other thing that I did not do, and I'm okay with it, is um, using cornstarch or arrowroot or something to thicken up the sauce. It's fine, just the way it is. I'm going to let that get a little bit hot. And then I'm going to add in the chicken. And these over here. I've got bone broth on the standby in case I need to add a little bit more moisture, but this actually works just fine. There goes the chicken. Now we're using chicken thighs. That's my preference. I find chicken... Um, well trimmed, all the fat on. But one of, the, one of my pet peeves is how chicken breast completely dries out. And if you've ever noticed, the chicken that you're eating is, when you're eating Chinese takeout, is always tender. They use thighs. A little bit of salt. 
and just a little bit of pepper. Give that a good stir. And it's not going to take long for this to get cooked up. Now you can add, um, and I'm sure you've seen this before, there's a, a spice blend that has it's Chinese uh, five spice, and in it they have some, all, I know they've got all kinds of stuff in there that you're probably not familiar with. I'm not that familiar with either. And um, that can add a nice flavor component to it as well. But basically what we're doing here is we're just doing a chicken stir fry. And when this is all cooked, I will put it into another bowl, which I don't have here, but I, I'll, I'll find one. Um, and then I will stir fry the vegetables, add everything back in, add all of the broth, everything else to it, and then let it simmer for a minute, and then it gets served on rice. Super easy. There we go. Almost done with that chicken. It doesn't take but a minute. And again, we always, you always want to salt and pepper, even if this is something that's just kind of a base, because it does make a difference. It does go into the, the meat, and it'll make it taste better. And this is going to be for when I'm ready to pull it all out. So there you go. <laughs> it's just that simple. Okay, let's see here. How are we doing? Cook, my friends. Is this high? Is this thing on? Yes, it is. So who tried the cabbage rolls from last night, from yesterday? The undone cabbage rolls. Anybody? Let me know. And let me know what recipes you've tried that we've cooked here that you've enjoyed and liked. And if you have any ideas for something that you might like that I haven't made yet, by all means, put it into the comments. We look at it. We watch everything that you do. We are watching you continually. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's how it is right now. Big Brother's watching. Any questions? Nope. Nobody? Nobody? Nothing? Okay. Almost there. I guess I could have put a lid on it, but I didn't. That's fine. I just want to meet. One more minute, get this chicken cooked all the way through. Raw chicken's kind of gaggy. You want to, one of the things too that you want to do is you want to put this chicken into strips. Do you see this? Like, a, like that. Chicken into strips. And you want to do it as, as much as possible. You don't want to have great big pieces and then small, tiny, weeny pieces. You want to have everything cooked, um, cut about the same size. Because then it, it takes just a minute for it all to cook up. That should do it. All right. I'm going to put this into and I'm just basically going to grab the chicken some of the onion will come with it of course which is fine but I'm going to leave some of the other onion in the pan which also is fine and again this is going to go back into the end get simmered up with everything else and it will make it taste delicious okay don't be like that Come on, everybody into the into the bowl. Get out of the pool. Adult swim. There it is. Okay. So the rest of this onion, I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the sides. Like, oh look, two pieces of chicken hiding. There's always two, isn't there? All right, there it is. And into this, I am going to add shrimpage. Yay. I think I lost a shrimp and underneath. Um, I just chopped up, I had four great big mushrooms. That's all that I've added here. Um, that was one medium-sized onion that I had cut up. And then just opening up these mushrooms so that they are not all bunched together. I just love a good mushroom. Now, one of the things about mushrooms, and I've told you about this before, especially when you salt them just a wee bit like I just did, 
is they will start to lose their liquid. I don't know why they say it that way, but that's how it's, what, how it's said. And we just want to get them nice and ground up, just for a minute. Now, if your pan is doing what mine's doing, which is getting a little bit dry, you want to come over and add just a little bit more oil, because dry pans are not a good thing at all. It, you can't saute with a dry pan. Okay. So the mushrooms are going to cook up. Put that over here. I also have some garlic. I'm going to get that prepared right now too. And you've seen me use the garlic rocker. Everybody loves my garlic rocker. I've got about, oh, I'm going to say four cloves of garlic. You want it nice and garlicky. You want to be able to taste the garlic, and you also want to be able to taste the ginger. Come on. And this is, we buy the garlic in the big bags that are already peeled and what have you, which I absolutely love. But, or you can buy them in the clove and then just sit there and laboriously peel it. But we pretty much go through it, the whole thing. Can you believe that? Because we never eat out. But here's the other thing is, you can always freeze it if, you, if need be. There we go, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Cook, my friends, cook. Yahoo! Doesn't that look yummy? I do feel like everyone loves a good mushroom. Now they're starting to fill their liquid. And they're getting brown. Took a minute, but that's how it is. Let me give it just another second. And then I'm going to throw in the cabbage. And you're going to notice each time I do this, with the exception of the carrots, I add just a little bit of salt. Because, again, that little bit of salt adds to it. I use a good salt. This is a pink. Himalayan salt, this is what we have, and uh, it just makes such a difference. Here comes the cabbage. Oh, can you get me the tweezers, Moby? <laughs> you know how I love them things. Okay, just put that in there, and then I've gone through before already, and I, if I find a great big piece or a big heavy stock, I'll just kind of take it with my hands and, and do this. I've already done that mostly on the Thing, but I'm gonna, you know, it's a good thing to do. Thanks. Now again, another little pinch of salt. Not a whole lot. I'm not putting a whole lot in. And the reason I use my hands is if you're using a spoon and going like this, you're going to use a whole heck of a lot of salt. This is literally a pinch of salt. And then you can just move it around and see how it lands. You're just trying to sprinkle a teeny tiny bit on top. You don't need a whole lot for this part of it. There you go. A lot of people saying that they were going to try the cabbage rolls. And I, that's why I was interested in asking. Is anybody saying that they've tried any of the things? A couple did. They loved it. Good. So good. It's so tasty. Okay, and you can see how the right here how the cabbage, how the mushrooms are browned, and the cabbage now is nicely wilted. Okay, we now have room to add the carrot. Now remember what I said about the carrots, we are not, we're just gonna get that kind of lightly sauteed up. Yes. Look at that, all those veggies, look at all that color. And I used a box grater on that carrot. Otherwise, those big slices of carrots, they're not going to melt nicely with everything else. They don't play nice. They kind of take over everything. There we go. There you go. Does that look good? Tell me it looks good. I think it looks good. Okay, garlic is going to go in now because there's no such thing as too much garlic. And, yeah, I'm going to use all that. Don't be shy. Garlic's your friend. Oh my goodness, you can smell the garlic now. Yum, yum, yum. 
Okay. Now I'm going to add the ginger. And I'm, go I'm going for it on the ginger. I'm going to say that's going to be a good teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. There, I'm going to just save that for later. I'm also going to add in a splash of the vermouth. Go crazy. I'm going to say probably you're going to need about a quarter of a cup of soy sauce. Let's give that a stir so that everybody's, everybody's joined in on the action. All right, mm-hmm, that smells really good. That chicken needs to go back in because it probably needs a little bit more cooking. Isn't it amazing what you can do in a, in a great big old skillet? I mean, honestly, you can have, this is, you don't need a wok. Woks are nice, but you don't have to have a wok. Nobody said you have to have a wok. Now we want to add the chili powder, right? Well, I mean the chili flakes. These are chili flakes. And this is just, you know, everybody has chili flakes. You can find chili flakes in any ethnic market. These ones, I think, are, came from, what? Where'd you get them? You got them. But they, they have a good, a good flavor. And they're really fresh. That's one of the things about ethnic markets is that they're really fresh. Now, right now, I'm going to add some of this because I know this is going to add just a skosh of good flavor. And with all that garlic in there, and it's also going to give it just have a little bit of that oil, which it needs just a slight bit of. Oh, the smell is just divine, I'm telling you. Divine. Going to need that bone broth, but I might just add just a little just because I feel like my signature is bone broth goes in everything except chocolate cake. All right, all right, look at that. Mm hmm, I can eat that. All righty, now for finishing because everything's cooked. Can you believe how fast that went? You're gonna put some peanuts in there. I'm gonna say I have about a quarter of a cup of peanuts. You could even add cashews, do a cashew chicken. I'm gonna add my cilantro, because I'm adding, I said it was Asian, you know, I don't know that if they put cilantro in any um, Chinese dishes, but why not? Green onions, because why not? And now, you want to get close, up close and personal? Let me just show you this. Look at the sauce that it made. You see the sauce? That's the sauce that it made. And that sauce is going to be part of the delicious equation. Doesn't that look so good? Let me see. Let me tell you what I think. Well, first of all, I'm going to use a spoon so I can taste the sauce. I'm not going to taste any chicken just yet. Just taste the sauce. Oh, okay, that's a winner. You guys are gonna love this recipe. There's a slight kick to it. I added probably, I'm gonna say a, a teaspoon of um, those, those chili flakes, maybe a half teaspoon. Just experiment with it, but it is delicious. Serve it on rice, you're good to go. Isn't that yummy? Easy Chinese takeout in a skillet. You're welcome. <laughs> That's all I have for you. If you'd like to become a member of our Dinner Answers Club, I'm going to call it a club because it is a club. However you eat, we honor that and we have dinner plans for you with shopping lists every single Tuesday. I'd love you to be a part of it. We have pandemic pricing because we want to serve you and we also need your support. It's $7 a month and every Tuesday, no matter what, 52, 52 weeks a year, we send you your, me your menu plans. So wouldn't you consider it? Go to SatanDinner.com and you will see the, the link right there to, to join. And also, by the way, this would work for the Sprint. We start the Sprint next Monday and uh, this is just a very Sprint adaptable recipe. Just don't put it on rice. 
I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I look forward to your comments. And if you have any ideas of something that you'd like to see cooked, just let me know in the comments. I'm happy to do it. I will see you later. Peace out. Thanks.